In the last chapter, you wrote your first lines of HTML and CSS. Congratulations! You got to create a heading in HTML and change its appearance via CSS. This is all you're going to do in the rest of the course. It's only the syntax and the nuance of the languages that becomes a little bit more difficult, but you already have a really good base. Now, in this chapter, we're going to talk about the importance of writing good HTML. Let's look at a quick visual example that will put into practice the importance of writing great structured content. Which of these two texts do you prefer? It's pretty apparent that the text on the right tells a better story. You can actually get into the rhythm of what's happening on the page, which is impossible to do in the version on the left. Writing good HTML will take your content from the example on the left to the example on the right. Not only is the formatted version easier for you to read, but it's also better for search engines, browsers, and people that have difficulty seeing. Consider that browsers are going to read the HTML code of your page in order to be able to surface it appropriately in search results. Whenever you Google something, you'll notice that the result in Google has a title, which is the title of each page, as well as a description underneath. And that description comes from your HTML. That means in order for people to access your content and for your content to be displayed appropriately by search engines, you need to make sure that you're writing great HTML that actually tells the story of your page. Of course, I haven't shown you how to write great HTML yet, but it's important to start with the why before getting into the how, because it is incredibly important and the more you're armed with this knowledge before you start writing code, the better your code will turn out to be. Consider also that not everyone can read websites perfectly. People with compromised vision use tools called screen readers that read websites out loud to them. Completely unformatted HTML is really chaotic to listen to. So by writing good HTML with structured, very purposeful content, you make it a lot easier for people with compromised vision to understand what's happening on your site. You wrote your first line of HTML in the last chapter, but let's look at its syntax a little bit more concretely. Here's a line of HTML. Let's say we're talking about a page that lists what you're supposed to pack for your camping trip. At the beginning, you have a set of opening and closing brackets or greater than and less than signs. In the middle, we have H1. This is classic HTML structure, and we call it a tag. A tag has a greater than sign and a less than sign with a name of the tag in the middle. So if you want to create a header, you'll be putting H1 in there. If you want to create a paragraph, you'll put a P. We'll look at all these tags later and you don't need to memorize any of them right now. All you need to know is that to create HTML elements, you start with an opening tag and then conclude the definition of your element with a closing tag, which looks similar except for there's just a slash in there. We're going to look at tags in a lot more detail in parts two and three, and by the end, you won't even think about them anymore. If they look strange right now, rest assured you'll be used to them very quickly. The exercise at the end of this chapter involves placing tags around pre-written content. You don't need to come up with the content yourself. You only need to focus on understanding what a tag is and where you put one. Go ahead and do the exercise, and I'll see you in the next chapter.